Hello there, I'm Black Right, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, I've decided to, rather than do lots of little videos, um, I've decided to try and amalgamate them all. I think for me, it will be, um, I think it's better use of my time. I think it's also, it will enable you to kind of skip through if you want to see what I'm talking about. But basically, I'm just going to round up all the things I would have done in individual videos into one and try to keep each topic short and sweet. And I'm, I've picked out what I believe are relevant topics. Um, so if it's the first time you're passing through, you can like, you can put the thumbs up, thumb down, you, you can subscribe, you can share, you can mingle with, the, with my subscribers. Uh, new subscribers, thank you, welcome. Existing subscribers, thank you for your support. I thought I would talk, well, this eviction thing is massive. I mean, when I think about the evictions, I was thinking about more or less, you know, the regular tenants that you, that there are. And, you know, because of the eviction um, is now been extended for one month. That's all it is, because normally landlords give tenants two months, which is normally enough. But under these circumstances, it's not enough. It's, it's been extended to three months, but really and truly, that is not enough. But um, but land, although landlords cannot um, initiate proceedings before the three months is up, those the Royal Assent was just on Friday on, on the Coronavirus Act, which did that, which protected people up until that point so as of friday any evictions are were more or less they can't take place for three months but they'd have to give you the eviction notice today but they can't start any proceedings until three months after that but the sad thing is is that before the royal scent was put on the corona virus act a lot of people thought that they were going to be protected from eviction and they're not so these people are extremely vulnerable those who um those who you know who might have been given an eviction order before the royal ascent are going to be vulnerable because they're not protected only those afterwards so that is, and the um, National Union of Students have written to providers of rented student accommodation um, requesting uh, a no penalty early release from rental or tenancy agreements because a lot of the students are probably international. So if the, if the universities and colleges are closed down, they cannot attend. So therefore, they are going to want to go back to their countries and they are not going to want to pay. Um, they're not going to want to pay a penalty notice for a situation that is beyond their control. So that's what the NUS is working on. Um, they're also asking for rent subsidies, reductions in rent, and they're also asking to suspend rent increases for the next twelve months. So that's for the students. Um, As we saw from um, the um, news announcements or COVID update last night, they're not routinely um, testing those people in government and um, because they reckon they're self-isolating. So I don't understand why they need to routinely attest outside government. I would have thought they would be the ones who are setting the standard. But there seems to be a there seem to be um, a different kind of understanding of what is going on there. I'm not quite sure. Um, no, no testing routinely in government. Um, there is a petition going around apparently. I don't know how many signatures are on it, um, trying to get mandatory testing stopped. Um, and I think the concerns are because. There is so much preparations for people to die. I think they're, they're planning for 33,000. And I don't understand why they're planning for death 
and not planning to preserve life. It doesn't make sense. I mean, you, there should be a way that you are, I mean, instead of kind of thinking, okay, we're expecting 33,000 deaths. Why aren't you thinking, how can we save 33,000 lives? So that is a bit disconcerting. Um, so, yeah, so we know that Boris Johnson has been diagnosed with the um, with mild symptoms of the virus. That's probably why he didn't cough throughout the speech. Um, but regardless, he still has it. He still needs to be, he still needs to self-isolate. Um, in Italy, 919 increased deaths in one day. Why are they dropping like flies when the coronavirus is not meant to be a high, highly infectious disease? It's, it's most bizarre. Because, you know, um, where is it? The, um, I don't even know where I wrote it down now. Um, where did I write it down? Okay. The high consequence infectious disease. The definition of that is an acute infectious disease, high fatality rate, no effective treatment, difficult to recognise and detect, ability to spread between healthcare settings, which which is a concern because um, that means the people who are you know dealing with children they're the most vulnerable. I mean not children. People who are dealing in these settings are the most vulnerable you know, in trying to heal other people, um, requires an enhanced individual population and system response to ensure it is managed effectively, efficiently and safety, safely. Now, according to the Natural and Common Law Tribunal for Public Health and Justice, the coronavirus does not fall into this category. So I don't understand why... You know what's happening. I, I, you know, it's it baffles me that nine hundred nineteen people in Italy, which now gives them a total of nine thousand one hundred thirty four deaths. You know, it's baffling. What is going on in Italy that's making it spread so quickly? Jonathan Ball, University of Nottingham. He's not sure if the vaccine tests will be ready until next week, I think. Apparently, um, Matt Hancock also has symptoms. He's the health secretary. And um, it's supposed to return next year. So even if we get over it within three months, it's supposed to return. It's supposed to be a seasonal thing. Um, what else? So, with regard to the vague instructions, I still think they are too vague. Um, and I'm not quite sure why there is an, an explicit lockdown. And Boris Johnson, he was saying that you allowed to go out and exercise in, in twos, but then if your family is larger... For those with a larger family, I mean, what is that about? They should not be allowed to exercise. Stay in your ass home. What are you exercising? Run up and down the bloody stairs. If you haven't got stairs, walk around your room for 20 times. It's a bit unfortunate for those who have dogs, but I, I would imagine if you've got, well, I... Maybe only dog walkers. Maybe dog walkers. Only those who've got dogs and who need to walk the dog out. But nobody else. None of this family business. And walking in twos in the park. That is absolutely ridiculous instruction. And then he'll say, oh, we've found people breaching the... Um, what he's saying, but how can they be breaching if it's so vague? If you're telling people that they can go out in twos 
or as a family. And then you see people on the street, you know, to go out and exercise. I mean, people's version of exercises is different. Some people might think exercising is jogging. Some people might think exercising is um, cycling. Some people might think a leisurely walk is exercising, and it is. So I don't see how at this point you can be fining people for being on the street when you've instructed them that they can go out in twos or with members of their family. So that needs to be clear. But, you know, those people who are out and we don't know what's who they are or what they're doing, all we know is that they're not making the country safe. If they feel as though they have to go out. They need to, they need to make the sacrifice and keep their butts in the house and only go out for essentials. And like I said in a previous video, those essential items should be um, outlined. Um, I did see something. I think I'm going to have to let you know what those essential items are. I saw them. I saw it somewhere and I've, I know I've saved it somewhere. So, yeah, it'll give you an idea of what is perceived as essential items, because like I said, what's essential for the rich is not the essential for the poor. And what is essential for one culture is not essential for another. So we need to be clear what we what is considered to be essential um, items when you're going out to the shop. OK, apparently, like I said, you know, people are being stopped and fined. This is under Operation Tala and fines are about £60. And if you pay it within a certain time, um, you only pay £30. Um, and they and they adopt this 4E um, policy, which is engage. The police or the army engage with you to find out why you are on the street. And then... E, the second E is to explain. They explain the rules and the regulations um, of the lockdown, which had, the words have not been outlined by Boris Johnson, only by the media. Uh, encourage. This is the point where they encourage the individual to go back in their house. And if they resist, enforcement. Um, I'm not quite sure what enforcement is. I don't know if that's prison. I don't know if that's the fine. I don't know if you get the fine just by actually being on the street. I don't know how it works. I mean, I think in America, the fines are about $1,000. It's not a criminal offence, however. So um, apparently it's not a criminal offence. Um, so there needs to be more, you know, Boris needs to stop being diplomatic and polite and tell it like it is. UK, stay at home. Don't request them. Don't suggest. Don't say you can or you might or you may. You must stay at home inside. You come out, empty your bin, you come back inside. It's unfortunate for people who live in apartment buildings. It's unfortunate for people who've got children. It's unfortunate for people who live in overcrowded um, conditions. It's unfortunate for people who have pets. But this is the reality. And if you want it to stop spreading, this is what you need to do. But the irony, the sad thing is, is that it probably will spread because a lot of people who will get the vaccine are not going to be able to fight that vaccine off. And so we're still going to have deaths either way, whether you stay indoors or whether you don't, because not everybody has got the same amount of resilience. Not everybody has the same um, immune, immune system, um, stable immune system. And during this time of stress, people's immune system is going to be very low. So you, it's really important that your immune system remains high either you are going to be susceptible, if not to the coronavirus, then something else. Okay, I'm not supposed to be spending long on these individual 
um, topics. Bob, Bob Andy, for those of you who are reggae artists, you'll know he died. May he rest in peace. Um, a school friend of mine, um, Delroy Washington, he died over the weekend in St Mary's Hospital. Um, it's not clear what he died of. But he was a promoter, producer, a, mus a musician, and um, may he rest in peace. Um, what else have we got here? Um, done that, done that. I mean, for me personally, in order for me to um, not get too overwhelmed with what's going on, I need to kind of emotionally detach myself from exactly what's going on because it, it can it, it can be quite taxing and I have to make sure I maintain my well-being um what else is there um, virgin media faces 4.5 billion um fine because they have allowed 900,000 customers personal information to be left online for 10 months unprotected um i don't know i'm hoping well i don't know if they're still going to be able to afford to bail out virgin islands but you know 4.5 billion to a billionaire it might be peanuts it might be nothing to him so may it probably won't make much of a difference to virgin airlines um but it does mean that the fact that 900,000 customers information is left online and is open your name your address and your phone number apparently no financial information but those three key pieces of information it could mean that you're open to scams i mean i saw something about hmrc scans that you know people are going to be trying to get you um get money from you left right and center during this time you know you've got people that have been able to perfect the art of scamming so you really need to be careful, especially um, since all this information has been leaked out and we don't know where it's gone. Apparently, um, lawyers, your lawyers, it's called, a firm based in Chesterfield has offered to help people who have had their full names and contact details released to get £5,000 each. I'm not sure how that is done unless Virgin um, is letting the individuals concerned know. And if you're a fraud, if you're a victim of a fraud or a scam, then I, I would probably think, yeah, you probably is worth pursuing. But that's an individual choice. Uh, millions of workers in the US won't be getting help. These are the und undocumented. I, I doubt they were getting help before, so this is not going to make any difference. So I don't know why it's made the news. But um, apparently... Um, then, you know, while other people are getting help, they're not going to get any. Um, eviction, three months notice as of Friday. But what about those whose eviction notice before the Royal Assent? OK, I've done that. Currently, landlords can inform tenants of intention to evict after late June. So it looks like January, April, May, June. OK, so it looks like Landlords can't tell you that they're going to evict you now. Now, how would it work? They can notify you after late June that you're going to be evicted. So is that giving them the three months from now to tell you that you're going to be evicted? Or as of June they can tell you you're going to be evicted in three months. That's not quite clear. So I'm not quite sure if they can notify you of eviction, potential eviction now, but they can't do anything about it until June when they'll give you a formal eviction notice. That's not clear. You're going to have to check that out, how that works. Um, job retention scheme does not work for small businesses and large hard-hit businesses like the airlines, nor is it available for self-employed. So, you know, it's it sounds good on principle that um, businesses are meant to be keeping as much of their staff as possible. If they're going under, how are they going to retain staff? How can they pay staff? They're not going to be able to. 
So that job retention scheme is not going to work for a lot of businesses. Probably the big, large, established business, yes, but not the small businesses. Um, and the job retention scheme, the money is not probably, I mean, even whether it's the job retention scheme or universal credit, you're not going to start seeing money trickle through until the end of June. That is, I don't even know if that's over optimistic, overly optimistic. So most people now need to head for universal credit or apply for universal credit. Um, standard payments are £251.77 a month for single people under 25. £317.82 a month for the over 25s. £395 for a couple under 25 years old each and £398.89 for couples who are aged over 25. But as we know, it means joining a long line of other applicants. The other day I heard them say, Jeremy Corbyn say, 110,000 in line. This guy was 99,000 in line. It obviously gives you a tally of um, where you are. Does that mean you sit up and watch it or does it mean you go to bed and come back in the morning does that night when you're waiting in line does that mean that you can't even start the application process or does it mean that you have to wait for the application to be processed while you're 99,009 I cannot think clearly I'm really to be honest my brain has is old. It's it's beyond me. It's beyond me. Um, you may be eligible for more than that if you have children or an underlying health condition, disability, or need help with the rent, interest payments on mortgages. That's going to take a long time to work out, I would imagine. Those payments have now been increased to match statutory pay of £94.25 a week. So, OK, ordinarily, I believe that from my understanding that if it was um, £251 for a single per... No, say, use the one over, th over 35. £317.82 for the over 25s. And if they're basing it on the £94.25 a week statutory sick pay, that would mean that 90, 180, 360. I don't see. It's about the same. It's not that much different. So I don't know what they mean. It's been increased to match statutory sick pay of £94 because it works out more or less the same. Anyway, um, how do you know if you're eligible for universal credit? Um, if you have been, if you have savings for more than sixteen thousand, well, if you have savings for more than sixteen thousand, I'd imagine you'd be doing your best to avoid all of this, because at least that should get you through, um, depending on your outgoings um, for the next sixteen thousand, sixteen months. I'd imagine. Well, maybe, maybe a year. Well, like I said, everybody's um, situation is different. So if you have savings of more than 16000 you you're you're not eligible, although you may have money invested in your own business, and this will not count. Okay, NHS staff are going to be the first to receive the antigen testing for COVID-19. Hundreds of frontline NHS staff to be tested this weekend, and those working in hospitals and social care to ensure the test is negative. Antigen testing. Antigens are part of, just in case you don't know what an antigen testing is, antigen, antigen testing um, are part of body's immune, antigens are part of the body's immune system. They are contained within a virus and are triggered to help the body fight off infection and develop antibodies. So I think that's a bit like, you know, when they give you the flu shot. 
Antigens can be detected in the blood before antibodies are made, meaning they are as much quicker they are a much quicker way of identifying whether someone has an infection. These tests have also been used to detect other viruses such as malaria and flu. So, like I said, the flu shot. Antigen testing is different from antibody tests, which are the first stage of the clinical trials, which can tell you whether you have already had the virus rather than if you are carrying it at the time. Now, last week, um, Boris Johnson was talking about antibody testing for frontline staff and health healthcare workers. Now, that's up the ante to antigen. Anti so they've skipped the first stage of the clinical trial and they're going straight to the antigen testing, which is the second stage. Um, I've already said that. Uh, let's think about those people, um, the immigrants who are trying to appeal their case where they're right at the back of the line during coronavirus. They are not going to have any priority, I would I wouldn't think. Now this thing. This light. Try to put it on so it's not so bright. Um okay, so any um anybody trying to appeal their immigrant status, um this is going to be done remotely. Um, vid by video link. So any trials, any appeals, the appellant is going to have to do that remotely. I'm not quite sure if they are still have legal representation um, when you're thinking about the social distancing, so maybe not. So they're probably going to have to try and sort of do this themselves, manage it themselves. Um, so in that kind of situation, they might not be confident, they might not I, they not be able to articulate um, their case very well and so that doesn't look like it's going to be a very successful option. I'm not quite sure what kind of support they get, whether they get interpreters. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But um, the immigrants who are appealing, that is the way it's going to be done. This is in the United States. So I don't think it's here yet. But I'm not sure. It's called a pilot practice direction, I think. Now we get on to money. Money, money, money. Um, Barclays, HSBC, Lloyds, Halifax and Nationwide have introduced new rules regarding overdraft payments. Now, they're all offering zero interest on um, overdrafts, but only for a limited period. I think it's about three months. So Barclays will introduce an automatic 0% overdraft between the 27th of March and April the 30th. HSBC clients will get 0% interest on overdrafts up to 300. I don't know what the interest rate is going to be after, the, um, after this period. Make sure you ask because some of those interest rates are going to skyrocket. Interest rates on credit cards are going to skyrocket. So make sure before you take your overdraft, you know what the implications are and what the interest rate is going to go up to. Lloyd's Halifax Bank of Scotland, interest, zero interest on overdrafts for three months, starting the 6th of April, which is the financial year. So yeah, you'll need to find out what the APR is after you, if you intend to use it. Landlords of, of retailers have lost a lot of money and they want a debt holiday. And um, I guess the landlords who don't want to give a debt holiday to regular tenants, it's kind of just like the top, bottom down. Apple are holding back on their 5G iPhones until after this crisis is over. But will it ever be over? Um, yeah. So that was my little roundup. I hope you found it useful. I'm sorry if I took too long to get through it. I do try to keep my gob shut, but I find it very difficult. Just remember that when I interject and I'm not reading, it's just my opinion, just my thoughts, and my mind doing overtime. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.